Hey guys, I didn't even realize you can see me up there. How funny. Let's kind of trip it. Whoa. <laughs> okay, anyway. Basically, throughout this video, um, I realized that I put the mic way too close to the desk. The mic is too good. It's not uh a good thing every time i put something up to the mic such as opening up a makeup container or even like tapping the desk you can hear it completely that is my fault my fault i'm sorry if that bothers you throughout this video it doesn't happen very often and i try to play with the audio to make sure that you don't really hear it but i just wanted to give a quick warning i am aware that that happened and it will be better next time okay Bye. Hello everyone, my name is Haley Elizabeth and if you don't know who I am, I post videos pertaining to a little bit of whatever I want. Conspiracy theories, controversial people, true crime, vlogs, and all things spooky, scary, skeletons. So if you're into any of that, you can subscribe and if not, totally chill. Like, if you just want to chill for the meantime, if you just want to hang out, completely fine with that like let's hang out let's vibe if you listen to the podcast then you know that i recently changed around my room and that included my desk so my desk is no longer where it used to be that's where i used to film these conspiracy videos but now i switched my desk to over here so i kind of created my own conspiracy corner i thought that would be like really cute because it's in a corner and i plan on like decorating it i want to get like a bookshelf right here sorry snoop sorry snoop and tupac um they're gonna have to go but anyway i digress today we are gonna be doing a conspiracy theory video oh yeah and i don't think i mentioned this but i have a mic so hopefully the audio is a lot better now but before getting into the rest of today's video i do want to give a big thank you to the sponsor of today's video helix sleep helix sleep makes premium mattresses and bedding that are completely customized to fit your needs and conveniently just ships right to your door everyone's different and helix knows that and so that's why before you get your helix mattress you have to take the sleep quiz just to make sure that whatever mattress you get matches perfectly with your body type and sleep preferences or if you even share a mattress with someone you can take that quiz with your partner and you guys can both find the perfect mattress that suits both of your needs my sister sarah and her fiance rob just recently moved into a home so i thought i would give them a little housewarming gift and that was a new mattress from helix sleep they both took the quiz and based on their personal preferences like sarah being a stomach sleep Sleeper, while Rob is a side sleeper and both of them preferring a medium feel and based on the results they matched perfectly with the helix plus mattress the mattress came all rolled up in a box and came super quick my sister and I put it together to surprise her fiance when he got home and honestly it was so easy to put together they've had it for a month now and they said they absolutely love it my sister used to frequently wake up with back pains and she said that for the past month since she switched to Helix, she has not had any back pains and instead she wakes up a lot more energized. And same thing with her fiance Rob, he had a tough time sleeping through the night. He would constantly be waking up and you know tossing and turning. But he said that ever since he made the switch to Helix, he says that he has gotten a full night's sleep and doesn't really wake up in the middle of the night anymore, which is perfect because Again, he can wake up the next morning feeling so much more energized and ready to go. With your Helix mattress, you will also get a 100 night sleep trial as well as a 10 year warranty. And I know that sometimes buying a mattress online can make people a little bit nervous because you know, you're basically spending all this money on something that you haven't even laid down on or you haven't seen if you liked it or not. But no need to fear, Helix is here because they understand you, they hear you, and that is why Helix actually gives you you a more than three months to test out your mattress if by any chance you end up not really liking your helix mattress you can easily just ship it back let them know hey not really my style and they'll be like okay give you a full refund and someone will come right to your door and pick it up for you so there's no hassle of trying to do it all yourself 
everything about this process was so easy ordering it online was super easy getting it straight to my door and then if i don't like it i can have someone come and pick it up for me with all of these little things combined you can really tell how much helix really does care about their customers so if you're looking for a new bed make sure to check out helix and go to helixsleep.com slash hayley elizabeth or click the link down below for up to 200 dollars off your helix sleep mattress as well as two free pillows. And thank you once again to Helix Sleep for sponsoring today's video. Now back to your video. So the very first conspiracy theory that we are going to be talking about is room 322. So this conspiracy theory actually started where a lot of my favorite conspiracy theories start and that is Reddit. A Reddit user by the name of Joe Likes Music was visiting Houston out on a business trip and he stayed at this hotel in downtown Houston called Hotel Zaza. Hotel Zaza was and still is a four-star hotel. It's a very fancy hotel. It's typically the type of hotel that you go to if you're staying on like a family vacation, a honeymoon, or just something like that. And back in 2013, Joe Likes Music had posted this to Reddit with the title Zaza Insider Question. What's up with room 322? Stay here frequently when on business. Hotel was booked solid and my colleague managed to score a room unplanned. We all had normal Zaza style rooms and he ended up in this goth dungeon closet. Seriously. The room had a chain holding the bed to the wall, pictures of skulls, and creepy in- don't know how to pronounce that word, so I'm just gonna- pretend like I said it. Portrait of an old man. Room was about one third of the normal size with the furniture blocking part of the TV, bed, and window. We asked about it at the front desk and the clerk looked up and said that room isn't supposed to be rented and immediately moved him. Anyone know what's up with this room? adding link to Imgur album here. So to summarize what I just said, this Reddit user was on a business trip with a couple of his friends and him and his friends actually got normal rooms except for his friend. His friend was put into this goth dungeon closet and inserted an album of the photos of the bedroom. As you can see, this room does not look like a hotel room. It's no bigger than a walk-in closet and features unsettling photos painted on the walls a bed hung up by chains, one real brick wall. Like, this wasn't one of those type of like wallpaper brick walls. This was actual brick wall. Concrete flooring, a theme of skulls in the bathroom, and a random picture of an old white man in the center of the room. The reason why this room in particular is so strange is because if you look at the Zaza Hotel and even just take a glance at all of their other rooms, this their rooms seem to look fairly normal. And if you compare like this room that he stayed in to a room on the website, completely different rooms. You wouldn't have even thought that that room was even a part of the hotel in the first place. So the room in itself was very, very odd. And that's when the friend went up to the front desk to ask like what room he was exactly put into because it did not look like a typical hotel room. And that is when the clerk had actually said to him, we weren't supposed to rent out that room. And they immediately moved him to a regular hotel room. Now, if you also look on the Zaza Hotel website, the closest thing I could find to why they would have a room like this, like conventionally, is due to their concept rooms. They have concept rooms and these concept rooms are not like very widely themed or anything like they have things like east indie you know like it's a concept room but it's not like a themed party room it makes sense with the hotel's reputation this took place in downtown houston so there's actually two different locations in downtown houston so i was looking at the other location in downtown houston and found that they also have concept rooms but same thing with the other houston location this one was was the same looking as the East Indie Room. This one had things like Divino Suite and Soho Loft. It definitely does not have chains on the walls, random pictures of old white men, as well as concrete flooring. Just a little side note that this hotel costs on average two to five hundred dollars to stay a night. For a very expensive and fancy hotel, even if this was like a weird con 
concept room, you would think you'd be getting your money's worth. People saw this post and they saw all of the photos. People felt very, very weird by it. So the internet basically just took it and tried to find out some answers. So the first thing that people questioned was, was this photo staged? He easily just could have taken a picture of a random, like one of those motels with themed rooms and then say that it was the Zaza Hotel but they actually found a year prior, back in 2012, there was a crime author by the name of Hillary Davidson that was visiting Houston on her book tour. She actually wrote a blog where she was just, you know, documenting all of her experiences, and on her blog, she had stayed at the Zaza Hotel, but one thing that people did notice, this picture of her skull painting in her room was the same exact picture of a skull painting that was found in Joe Likes Music's Reddit post. That's how people knew that this room was indeed in the Zaza Hotel because as they could see, Joe Likes Music and Hillary Davidson had no connection towards one another and these instances happened a year apart from one another. So Hillary posted this picture to her blog and it read this. When I first checked into Houston's Hotel Zaza at midnight on Thursday night, there was some confusion. My first room was a themed room known as the hard times room this skull was on the wall a few minutes after i got there the front desk called up and said that they had to move me the people at the front desk were deeply upset at the thought of me being stuck in that room. I told them I was a crime writer, but they insisted on moving me to a swanky room. And swanky rooms is what they call these sort of rooms, just like basic, you know, typical hotel looking rooms. That was found a year prior on her blog, meaning that there would be no way that like Joe Likes Music could be lying or these pictures could be staged because that post was found found on like a completely opposite side of the internet. Once people found out that this room was indeed at the Zaza Hotel, that is when they started to shift their focus onto the creepy man in the photo. His name is actually Jay Comey from Oklahoma, but he moved to Louisiana where he was an alumni at LSU and he was a part of the fraternity Delta Kappa Epsilon. And coincidentally, a chapter in this fraternity was called Zeta Zeta, which sounds a lot like Zaza. I know I'm kind of reaching, but hang on real quick, okay? Within this fraternity, there was also another secret group that was called the Friars, whose logo was coincidentally skulls and bones, a lot similar to the skulls and bones that were found in the bathroom of this room. But later on in Jay's life, he moved to Houston, Texas, and he was the executive at the Stanford Financial Group and was a part of of running a Ponzi scheme with a couple of other men. This Ponzi scheme was apparently so big that the main guy who was doing the entire thing, his name was R. Allen Stanford, he ended up actually getting 110 years in jail, so essentially a life sentence in prison for completing 13 counts of fraud. Because of this Ponzi scheme, whenever you look up Jay's name onto Google, there's not really much about Jay except that, God rest his soul, he actually actually passed away in May of this year. Other than that, you just find a bunch of articles talking about the Ponzi scheme that he was in and all of the settlements that he had to pay out due to this Ponzi scheme. So now that the people knew who this man was in the photo, it just didn't really answer any questions anyone had. If anything, it actually created a lot more. So that is when media outlets started to get a hold of this very crazy story and they spoke with the hotel spokesperson named Coots. So Coots was in an interview and when she was asked about the themed rooms, because as I said, they do have a couple of themed concept rooms, but the only ones I could really find were the ones that made sense, that were very classy themed rooms. Coots told us that this is in fact one of the hotel's themed rooms. It's called Hard Times, which if you think back to the blog post, she did indeed say that she was switched to the Hard Times room. I don't know about you, but hard times sounds a little suspicious, if you know what I mean. It's a play on a jail experience. Hmm. 
We'll note again it's not mentioned on the website, which lists and describes the other themed rooms. While it's a compact room, it has one of the hotel's largest balconies, which overlooks the pool area, she said, in parentheses. The other side of the hotel features another compact theme room called Ship's Cabin, which resembles a yacht and looks over the pool. She says neither room is a secret or being kept from being rented. Now, within that statement alone, you see a contradiction. So in order to even book a room at the Zaza Hotel, you can either do it online or in person. And in her statement, she even clarifies that this specific room, oh my God, today's Mexican Independence Day. Hold on, pause. Come on, give me a little cheers. Give me a little cheers right quick. Yeah, drink it up. She even says herself that this specific room cannot be found on the website whatsoever. So how the heck am I supposed to book this hard times room if it's not on the website and if i ask you for the concept room you're only going to give me the rooms that are available what if this hard times room isn't available how would i even know about it and then at the end it very specifically states that this room is not being kept from anyone and it's not a secret whatsoever so if it's not a secret, then why isn't it on your website? Why aren't you promoting it? If you went through all of the trouble of making and furnishing that room, wouldn't it make more sense for you to want to promote that room and try to get as many people to stay in that room? Say, hypothetically, <laughs> For some weird reason, I'm on vacation and I want to experience jail. How would I be able to book this room? Or how would I even know about this room or even have knowledge of this room without prior knowledge from other people online? Why would the Zaza Hotel go through all of the trouble of making a real brick wall furnishing that room, paying plumbing on that room, paying taxes on that room for it to get absolutely zero profit because they are not promoting it on their website or to their customers. There's actually a YouTube channel called Barely Sociable that did a video about room 332 and he actually called the Zaza Hotel and had a conversation with one of the employees there and there he was asking about their concept rooms and what they offered you, you have a full a full list of are they the concept suites is that what they are so our suites uh, range from the top level are the magnificent seven suites um there's only seven on the 12th floor and then we have the concept suites which is on the 11th floor um and those are also themed suites as well and then under that falls the junior suites the junior suites aren't themed they're just um bigger suites with basic a little, little more spacing rather than just a standard level room Okay, so just to go through this, um, oh, so you do, you guys have photos here on the website, so just bear oh, with yes, me. Oh, yes, Yeah, yeah, I just pulled it up. Um, thank you. Um, so just to make sure the, the full list of suites here, because um, I'm going to let uh, the girl I'm going with decide. So just uh, you guys have the, the Bella Vita, the Black Label, Fatal Charms, and you've obviously listed the ones that you have available. Um, for your eyes only, it, it happened one night, Rockstar Suite, Tycoon, and then for the concepts, um, so there's no, okay. So there's no other suites, um, like no other themed suites. These are all of them. Just these two. Um, ones. yes, sir. Those are all of them at this property. Okay, and you guys, do you guys have another property in Houston? We do. We have the Memorial City location. Um, is that like a separate website? Same website. Um, if you just go on the on on top where it says hotels. You select it, and it'll give you the option to select Memorial City or Museum District. Okay. All right. Well, um, I'm going to look through the photos here, and uh, just to confirm, these are all the suites for both properties, correct, in Houston? Yes, sir. That's correct. Meaning you cannot get this room unless you specifically have prior knowledge of it. This room altogether is just a very odd room to look at and to be in. And the media even asked Coots one of the million dollar questions. Why is there a random picture of Jay just in the middle of this room front and center like it's a shrine or something? And Coots just simply responds back with quote, I would definitely need to get back to you on that one. And also having a jail experience, that's a little odd to me because if you really wanted a jail experience, 
just go to jail. It's not that hard, actually. So whenever the media really spoke to the spokesperson, Coots, they were just honestly left with so many more questions than answered. And it was very, very odd that both people who spoke up about their experiences in this hard times room both had very similar experiences in that shortly after they were booked into the room, they were both immediately taken out of the room and were told the same exact thing of that they weren't allowed to rent out that room to people and it was a complete mistake. So why is it a mistake? Why does this room exist? And that is where the conspiracy theories come in. So I could only really find two good conspiracy theories about 322, things that made sense mostly. And the first one being that this room is being used by the owner or the employee as a way to kind of have affairs. And that is why it is unable to rent out, but the room still exists. Hoots also said in one of the media interviews that at one point the president of the company actually lived in that hard times themed room for a total of two months five days a week if you were a president of a hotel why would you choose the smallest room that you have to stay there for two entire months that room is very unlivable for even just a couple of nights let alone an entire two months five days a week. A lot of people assumed that maybe they were having their sexual affairs in this room just by the looks of the room. It looks like a sex dungeon, essentially. The Hard Times room is a private room where wealthy business women and men would have their secret affairs in confidentiality, and the only way to get access to this affairs room is if you specifically ask for it and use the code word, may I please book the hard times room. To me, that theory does not seem super far-fetched. That actually seems, unfortunately, something that could happen. If you have a wealthy business person that owns a hotel and then you have another wealthy business person and they're like, hey, wealthy hotel manager, I have this affair going on, but I can't really complete this affair at my house because my wife or husband or kids are at the house. And so if you can hook me up with a room, that would be great. And this wealthy hotel person is like, yeah, actually, we kind of have a hotel room that's catered to your needs. It's very small. It's kind of hidden away in the back. It kind of has the ambiance of what you're looking for. But since it is a little bit more secretive, you are going to have to pay a little extra to stay there. This wealthy businessman or woman is like, yes, of course, I'll do it. And then that is when they go to the hotel, specifically ask for the hard times room. The second conspiracy theory that I found about room 322 and this one very very similar to the first one is quite believable to the point where I actually don't really know which conspiracy theory I believe in more. What is one thing that all of us humans kind of have in common? What is something that the general public loves? drama, gossip, and true crime. So we see it time and time again where hotels will get their big break or their name out there by tying a very paranormal or famous crime attached to the hotel, such as the Cecil Hotel. The Cecil Hotel literally had an entire Netflix documentary. We also see it with the Stanley, the Queen Mary, half of Sam and Colby's YouTube channel, like it's everywhere. So it would make sense why this hotel kind of saw other hotels doing that and would want to do the same to theirs. And so that's when they created this fake hotel room to kind of get people talking and to do exactly what I am doing right now and giving the hotel free promotion. Basically, the hotel just kind of saw what other hotels were doing and just wanted to break off that Kit Kat bar and started to create their own little mystery ghost story so that people would be more inclined to stay at their hotel. And who's to really know if those stories actually happened in the hotel? Sometimes hotels will literally just make it up so that people feel more inclined to stay there. Now, in my personal opinion, I do think that this theory makes sense, but I also feel like we're giving the hotel too much credit. If they were to actually do something like this, that means they would have had to assume that the people that they kick out of these hotel rooms will then 
go online and talk about it. And then on top of that, also expecting this story to get viral. And it's also like kind of annoying. Imagine you get off of an eight hour flight and you're already like super tired, super drained. The first thing you wanna do is just like take a shower, go to bed and go to sleep. And then you walk into this that is my last straw. And then to make it even worse, 10 minutes later, the front desk calls me saying that I have to be moved. The hotel would just call you and be like, no, 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 no. Oh, oops. You weren't supposed to see that. God, sorry about that. Usually we don't rent out that room to people. Let me rebook you. Girl, I want to go to bed. Like, please, what are you doing? I don't know what this sick game you're playing, but I don't want to play. I'm out. I'm benched. I want to go to bed. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of that, um, what your thoughts and opinions are. But now we are going to be moving on to our second conspiracy theory, and that is the forest of vanishing children. Just along the San Gabriel Valley in California lies the Angeles National Forest. This national forest is 700,000 acres of forest in Los Angeles that has quite a long list of children going missing in the specific forest dating back all the way to the 1950s, where essentially these children were lured into this forest and never seen again. And even when search teams went out into this forest to find the missing kids, they wouldn't find anything of these missing kids. They wouldn't find clothing they wouldn't find footprints as if the kid just went into the forest and completely vanished so the first recorded incident of this was made on august 5th of 1956 of an 11 year old by the name of brenda howell and her friend who was 13 year old donald baker were biking in this specific forest and all of a sudden just vanished and was never saw again. Despite the efforts of both the Navy, police officers, and hundreds of volunteers scoping the areas and trying to find where these two kids had went, they had found nothing of the children. The only thing that they really found left of the kids was Brenda's bike outside of the forest, but other than that, they couldn't find any shoe prints, no adult footprints, no kid footprints. It simply just looked like these two kids had vanished. And that is when this forest had gotten the name, the Forest of the Vanishing Children. Shortly after this, that is when six more kids all went missing in this forest and in the same exact way. In the spring of 1957, there was this older man by the name of Eldon Bowman, and he was with his brother-in-law, Gordon Wicks. And the two men, had brought both of their kids to this forest just to, you know, explore in nature, walk around, take a little hike. And there was the oldest kid named Tommy. And Tommy, since he was the oldest of the kids, the two guys decided to just kind of let him lead a little bit. So Tommy was a little bit farther than everyone else in the group. As they were on this trail from the testimony of Eldon and Gordon, they said that as they were walking, that is when they saw Tommy turn this corner on the trail. And when they turned the corner, they found that Tommy was no longer around that corner. They started to call out his name saying that, you know, if he's hiding, please come out. This isn't a joke. They even told police that from the time Tommy rounded the corner to the time where Eldon and Gordon had rounded the corner was only a couple of seconds. So that is why they assumed Tommy couldn't have gone that far because it was only a couple of seconds later. Later. Similar to the other two kids as well, there were many, many search parties held for Tommy, but no matter how many efforts were made, they were unable to find any trace of Tommy. Tommy, such as all those other children, just quite literally vanished. After this, there were a bunch of kids just simply vanishing in this forest without a trace, without people knowing why or having any idea where they could have gone off to. Even to this day, there has been a couple of reports of kids just simply walking through this forest and never being found. With this, there are 
are a couple of conspiracy theories. Conspiracy theory number one, there was actually a serial killer back in the 1990s who was arrested and whilst he was arrested, he was actually suspected of these child vanishing crimes, specifically eight of the kids that went missing, but um, they lined up the dates and found that even after he was imprisoned, the missing children still continued. A lot of these missing kids cases actually happened while the man was in prison, so there would be no way that he could be committing these crimes if he was already locked up to begin with. Another conspiracy theory that I found was more of like on the sci-fi side. Something happened to these kids where they were abducted by some aliens or something. Now, there's no real concrete evidence to prove this. No one really found any crazy, you know, technology in the forest or anything to prove this, but since these kids just quite literally vanished, I mean, the conspiracy theory doesn't seem that far-fetched. Also, why are people getting shamed for using their fingers when they're doing their eyeshadow? Honestly, I think it's so much easier to use your fingers because whenever you swatch an eyeshadow, you're always using your finger to swatch it. You're never using like an eyeshadow brush or something. And that's because eyeshadows just come out so much more pigmented when you use your fingers. So the third and final conspiracy that we are gonna be talking about is C Labs. Now, I don't know if you guys remember, not my last conspiracy video, but two conspiracy theory videos ago, I was talking about ninjins and my fear of the ocean. I don't, I like to swim in the ocean because that's a little bit more comfortable, you know, you're, there's like a barrier where you're like, don't go past this point. And I'm like, I'm fine with that. If I was deserted in the middle of the ocean, what am I going to do? Flap my little arms and <laughs> flap my little feet? No, that is embarrassing. I'd rather not. C Labs was said to be done by the US Navy back in 1960 to advance knowledge on marine life and the human body. So what they would do during these human experiments is that they took what's called underwater habitat and placed them in different parts of the ocean for researchers to live and, you know, do research in there. It was basically just a way, as I said, human experimentation. Human experimentation, like the Russian sleep experiments and all that, very, very interesting. I could honestly do an entire video just about all of that, but specifically, we're going to be talking about this human experiment. Essentially, the Navy would put these volunteers down in the ocean and try to test the limits of the human body. How much pressure can the human body sustain before it starts to live effects of that pressure? How much air do we need? Do we take in more air the deeper in the ocean we go or is it the same for closer up to the surface of water? It's called saturation diving. It's basically just how long breathing gas can last you under a crazy amount of water pressure and the human's responses to living in isolation underwater and in complete darkness for long periods of time. So they were not only testing the physical body but the mental as well. So that is where kind of the conspiracy theories come in because it was said that three aquanauts, which I think is such a cool name, they were called aquanauts instead of astronauts. Three aquanauts went down to stay there for a total of three weeks and the first two went down completely with no issues, but the third one, however, went down and his carbon monoxide tank actually malfunctioned and since, as I said, this was simply just a volunteer, he didn't have any ways of knowing how to fix it himself and he ended up passing away due to this. When this man had passed away and people found out how he passed away, the public got a hold of what the Navy was doing and it became a huge thing in the media until eventually the Navy was like, all right, all right, it, we get it. We, someone died. We get it. <laughs> the experiments that we're doing are super dangerous. Boho, Crimea River, we'll stop it. And that's exactly what they did. They stopped it. The Navy actually has never shut it down, but continues to do these experiments. So the conspiracy goes is that even to this day, the Navy, because I think human experimentation is very illegal now, but that is basically the conspiracy that the US Navy is still to this day continuing to use human volunteers. And what's very unfortunate about this as well is that a lot of these human volunteers weren't even volunteers. They were simply 
just people that were in prison or very unfortunate situations that needed extra money so again that is how the first person died they were simply just a volunteer had no experience in what they were doing so they didn't know how to fix the issue when the issue arose and why people believe that they are still doing these experiments a lot of scuba divers have allegedly on their trips down in the ocean they have found these underwater habitats that people you know used to use as a way for these human experiments and so when the navy was asked why these underwater habitats were still underwater they always had some sort of excuse as to like oh that was from an old thing so that's why people still believe that these human experiments are still going on even though as i said i think they're illegal now that was our third and final conspiracy theory i hope you guys enjoyed we discussed a lot of spooky things today we discussed room 322 and the possibility of what that room is is it like a secret room for people to have their disgusting affairs in or is it just one big publicity stunt or are we giving them too much credit for planning this miraculous publicity stunt and then we also talked about the forest of the banishing children how children will simply just go into this forest and then leave without a trace and no one knows where they went or where they go and our last one was of course sea labs where the navy is doing human experimentation on innocent people and having people essentially just die for their own curiosity and pretending like they're not doing it when in fact they are i hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you did make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to follow me on any of my socials like my instagram that will be linked down below as well as my po box if you want to send me anything and as well as well all of the makeup that i put on my face so if you're like Haley, what is that shadow what is that lip all of that will be linked down below for your own little pleasures i went for like a very season of a witch sort of look it's fall time you know and usually for fall time i always opt towards like darker shadows and darker lipsticks again welcome to conspiracy corner um because it's in the corner and i'm doing conspiracy hopefully by next week because i'm doing another conspiracy theory video next week there will be like some bookshelf right here some really cool decorations i hope you guys enjoyed i love 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 doing conspiracy theory videos if any of you guys have some really good conspiracies that you want me to deep dive on or just conspiracy theories that you've heard and i haven't talked about send me a little dm on instagram let me know and also let me know in the comments below if you you know do your own research on these conspiracy theories or you have done your own research on these conspiracy theories and you notice something that i didn't mention or maybe you know something that i don't know pop it in the comments below let's have a little discussion let me know your findings yes um i will see you guys next week for another conspiracy theory video make sure to be safe out there drink some water hug someone you love today even if that someone is yourself give yourself a big old hug appreciate yourself love yourself relax a bit today look at the sky appreciate how blue and beautiful the sky is today and even if it's raining take a little listen to that rain patter read a good book take care of yourself today because i love you i love you i love you and do something that makes you happy today